What is up you guys, welcome back to Brad Reacts. Another unplanned video today. This is a, a new documentary coming out on uh, Channel 4 called The uh, British Miracle Meat. Quite controversial from what I've read. Now it won't let me, now my computer won't let me screen record the actual documentary. So I've got the next best thing which is another camera set up <laughs> to film my screen. So yeah, we're gonna check it out and see what all the fuss is about. You can't beat British grub. But these days you've got to spend a packet to bring home the bacon. And don't even get me started on the eggs. The cost of living crisis is hitting Britain hard. With food prices rising at the fastest rate right. in 40 years. But now a new line of affordable protein is hitting our shelves. This is engineered human meat. That's right, a protein made from human cells that promises to be cheaper and tastier than any of its competitors. Nah! Human meat grown in a lab. Going on shelves. Nah, this... <laughs> this has got to be a joke, isn't it? <laughs> I'm Greg Wallace, and I'm off to visit Good Harvest, where a whopping six tonnes of human meat is engineered every day. That is stunning. With the promise what? of cheap meat for all, it may well be the meaty miracle we need to ease the squeeze of the cost of living. For the first time, we're going to find out where it comes from, how it's made, whoa, and what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. oh. mm. Greg Wallace, the British Miracle Meat. Hashtag Miracle Meat. Oh, I can't believe this. I'm up bright and early to check out the good harvest. It's like Jeffrey Dahmer's dream. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. It's Greg Wallace. I've got an appointment. I'm the ball bloke off the telly yeah. with, the, with the glass. <laughs> Bald bloke I couldn't off to tell wait you with a glass. The mysteries that lay inside, and this is where the magic happens. The Good Harvest processing plant has been up and running for over eight months. It contains both industrial and clinical oh operations gosh. on a site the size of four football pitches. Mick Ross oversees the production line and is in charge of over 60 full-time staff who engineer roughly 50,000 steaks every day. 50,000 steaks every day of human meat. What the f Is this really what we're coming to? Companies and governments trying to turn us into cannibals. All right, actually, oh, I'm not even gonna say it. Yeah, I might say it later on. <laughs> so come on then, Mick. How on earth do you grow human meat? I want to introduce you to our nutrient fat. Hello, nutrient fat, Greg Wise, <laughs> telly presenter, and your job is? Well, what its job is, it processes thin slices of tissue in a nutrient-rich mix, which you see here, and then cells start to grow. So over a 24-hour period, these will slowly fuse together into one great big, what we call a cake. So you're telling me that that is human flesh. Exactly. Good Harvest encourages people who need the income to sign up, select their own extraction site, and get paid within the week. You expect to be feeding the nation with this. You're gonna need a lot of donors. Well, it's well in demand, and we've got a lot of people coming forwards, because the other great thing about it, it's an opportunity to be paid. Would you ever consider donating yourself? Yeah, maybe I would. I mean, I may have to. My bills are as high as anybody else's. You know, I've got a no. to, to feed, so. And would you feed your family human steaks? Oh yes, most definitely. Already have. After the donor's tissue samples are placed in the nutrient fat, they're stimulated with electrodes and left to grow at 40 degrees centigrade at the proving bay. So Greg, after a few hours, this is what we're left with. Whoa! It's a cylinder of marbled meat, perhaps a metre long, in a bubbling tank. Oh my god. Man, that's the biggest chunk of meat I've ever seen. I mean, scientifically, that's amazing. But in terms of food, that is stunning. It is incredible, isn't that it? That is stunning. Look at it. This 30 kilogram protein cake will be cut into nearly 100 steaks 
and it's all been grown from the cells of just one person. This must be a relatively new process. Which is, uh, I mean, under EU law, we couldn't possibly operate machines like this due to legislation, but thankfully now we're out, we can harvest people, and we can pay them for their flesh. So what happens to this now? Right, well, this will either be cut into steaks, or it'll go off and be processed for sausages, burgers, you name it, you can do anything with it. Proper space age, isn't it? This, this mm. meets me up, Scotty. <laughs> I've got to grips with the guts of human meat production, but I wanted to know, how does this new protein compare to a real steak? It was time for that all important taste test. I knew just the shit. Don't do it, Greg. This is a meat I've never seen before. I want to see what the fat content's like. I want to see what the flavor's like. I want you to cook it, because I don't know anybody better. Hang on a minute. Good harvest, made by humans, from humans? Yeah, these come from three donors in the northeast of England. Wow, I wonder if that affects the flavour. You're right. Do donors from the northeast of England have a different flavour and <laughs> to, to ones from the south east? I would have thought so because it's what we call in French terroir. It's where where you were brought up. You are what you eat at the end of the day. This looks nah. Nice. So we're just gonna. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Mm. You all right? Mm. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna put it on the plate. So we just need to let it rest for five minutes and then you can taste it. Michelle had cooked up a human meat feast of three succulent steaks. Now the taste test could begin. Whoa, beautifully cooked, of course, nicely what? presented. Should we both try this one first? Mm, okay, right, let's go. These engineered steaks are grown from the cells of human donors who are paid for their flesh. Uh. Can we guess which sort of person each steak has been grown from? Yeah, you've got to chew this one. I mean, this, this, this is really... Mm. This steak is actually one of the cheaper ones in the range. That is vile. They are eating human meat. Whether it's been grown in a lab or not, it is human meat. Now, I've got quite a strong stomach. I don't think I want to finish watching this, but... Ah. <laughs> uh. pure beef, I'd say that this was an animal that's got a certain age, um, and maybe, maybe a little bit stressed as well. Well, I've actually got some tasting notes here. So look, these good harvest steaks have been cultivated from Alison, 45 years old, NHS nurse, and part-time delivery driver, so very active. Two jobs. Oh my which God, it's actually got details of the donor on there as well. It's not veal or, or a young cow, as it were. Master taster Michelle hadn't quite nailed the provenance, but what about steak B? 59p. That looks nice. Mmm. Mmm. Well, there's almost a sweetness to this. It's tender, fattier, really tender. Mm. I've got the tasting notes on this one as well. These good harvest steaks have been cultivated from Guy, 39 years old, was working in social services, now redundant, and I think this means that he's not moving around, is he? He's doing a lot of sofa sitting and telly watching, which has made him more relaxed, plumper. It's not good for Guy, I suppose, to be redundant like that, but it's great for us. Mate, this good. is wrong. I don't think this is about where in the country they come from. I think it's about the lifestyle. This is wrong. They're eating human meat. Steak to try. It's part of a new range from Good Harvest that's being kept secret until its launch. As if it's given a sneak peek to try and normal. guess the donor. It's still going through FSA trials, mm -hmm. so they can't tell us exactly what it is. But I really want to give it a go if you are up for it. Yeah, yeah, I'm up for it. It looks great. Come on. Mm, right. Like a knife through butter, that is. Michel raises his eyebrows in surprise. Oh, wow. Mmm. Mmm. That hardly needs chewing. That is unreal. It is proper melt-in-the-mouth quality. Mmm. I'm quite amazed by that. And that is no. a third of the price of an average ribeye. Wow. The donor must be someone pretty special, I think. That is the kind of meat that I would serve here. At the Good Harvest Clinical Wing, donors of all shapes and sizes get expert medical advice on which parts of their body are most suitable for extraction. I can't believe this. Speak to one of them. 
Hello, Gillian. You all right, kid? Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm going to be sticking my snout in your marrow. From donor to donor kebab. Go for it. Yeah. Our cameras visited Gillian's home near Lincoln. It's not even funny, is it? 67 year old retired receptionist, originally from Hornchurch. She lives with her grandson Jimmy and her housebound husband David. Oh, my husband was a plasterer, but then after his back went, well, I ended up doing a lot for him. When the price is shot up, well, it buried us. It really has. Am I excited about donating? No. You know there's something wrong when you've got to jump on a bus and go and have some flesh scooped out of your arm for money. How can you do that? How can you... Oh. I mean, do you know what? It is... It is sad that... You know, this is what it's come to. People having to... Go and donate their flesh for a bit of money knowing that... A big lump of meat is going to be grown from that flesh and people are going to be eating it. I wouldn't want people eating me. That's just... I don't know, it just doesn't seem right to me. Look, as our gang head off to get scrubbed and clean for harvest, I wanted to know what was in store for them. And who better to explain than the CEO of Good Harvest and private healthcare entrepreneur, Tamara Ennett. Hello, Greg. You must be Tamara. I am. Welcome to our donor site. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Of course. Would you like a tour? Would I? Does a dog wolf? <laughs> Come on. Tomorrow's company seeks to offer a helping hand to the economically deprived. It's nice. They want to disrupt the cost of living crisis by paying low-income individuals to have some of their flesh extracted. How did you get into this? I mean, it's not something that is natural career move, is it? So my background is in elite healthcare specializing in human cellular science. That combined with the cost of living crisis, the demand for cheaper meat and voila, Good Harvest was born. It was amazing to be able to do something that would give back and help so many people that can't help themselves right now. Serious question, mm -hmm. boss, does it hurt? It is pain subjective. So it hurts? It's just pain subjective. It's subjective. We just need the right people to With step pain. forward and grab this amazing opportunity to pull themselves out of the crisis. Before harvesting begins, the donors are weighed and measured so the right amount of flesh can be extracted. How much flesh are you taking from them tomorrow? Well, it's a deliberately variable measurement. So with Gillian, for example, we have seen that she has an excellent fat to muscle ratio. So we should be able to extract a snooker ball or possibly even up to an orange. Chocolate or normal? Hi, Gillian. How are you doing? OK. You're looking good, Gillian. Hmm. Because of inflation, today's extraction will pay for two weeks worth of energy bills, but not baseline care for her husband. Luckily, Tamara thought she could help. Now, Gillian, I've just been told by our team that we actually have space in our operating schedule for two incisions. So, one from the buttock and one from the upper thigh. Of course, that would result in a 50% uplift in fee. So, how does that sound? Um, two extractions, but it's the same recovery. Gillian looks concerned, but eventually nods. Yeah. If I were in your position... This is exploiting the... Is it not going to hurt more? It is painful. The vulnerable. Julian, you'll soon be asleep, okay? Do you know what? I don't like this one bit. They're exploiting the, the, the vulnerable, like the poor, vulnerable people that are really, really struggling. Uh, yeah, this... This is fucked up. Yeah, I don't really know what to say about this. This, this, this ain't right. 45 minutes ago, a 67-year-old retiree had her flesh harvested for cash to help her live within her means. But now I wanted to find out how this meaty miracle could help the public. Hi there. Would you like to try some human meat? From human cells. Okay. Have a taste. It's from human cells. Interested in trying I mean, it? Yeah, why not? Let me know what you think. Yeah. What? It's really um, tender. As a student, for 99p, I would 100% buy that. <laughs> Flavour wise, I mean, that would make a really How the hell? No, it no, 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 no. The good harvest How are people okay with this? Recovery. Oh, Gillian, this is fluid dug from your spine so we can check for bacteria. Oh. Gillian is that bit older, so her pain subjective reaction is at the upper end of moderate. 
It's still within the normal range. Gillian, you look a million dollars. I was reassured that Gillian's reaction was perfectly normal and she'd soon be heading home with a smile on her face, pleased that her double extraction would help support her family. So Tamara took me to the Good Harvest Ballroom to learn more about her company's plans for the future. We're actually researching human leather. We think that it could be a low-cost game changer for the fast fashion industry. But right now, we are focused on the launch of our brand new food range, which you actually had a taster of. The mystery meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mind telling you, that was fantastic. I've been lucky enough to taste Good Harvest latest meat. Oh, lucky oh, enough? Oh, there we are. Like a knife through butter, that is. But I didn't yet know who sells it had come from. So I'd snagged a spot at a special screening of the promotional video with the board of directors to find out. Oh, hello. Packs of human meat on screen. Three months ago, Good Harvest revolutionized the food industry. Now, our new product is about to disrupt it again. We're keeping our prices low while making our steaks even <coughs> more succulent. What's our secret? It's well-fed children under the age of six. Oh, stop so it! Good Harvest, we consider the womb nature's oven. Preheating a delicious juicy donut until their flesh is ready to eat meat. Milk reared and well rested, these children donate the best meat money can buy. It's all gravy, baby. Because our babies taste great with gravy. The Good Harvest Premium Range from Junior Donors. Delicious. Now that is f***ed up. That is absolutely diabolical. What the f***? Nah, this has got to be a joke, surely. This has got to be a joke. I can't believe this is real. I cannot believe people in the world have become so sick and twisted. Surely this wouldn't be allowed anyway. Surely, 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 surely this is not allowed. Surely this has got to be fake. Someone please comment down below, tell me this is fake. Because this, this shit ain't right. This is wrong. Any questions? Eating a steak harvested from five year old Bill. How old are the, the, the how old what are the, the Under sevens. Nah. You, you, um, I have to ask this. Uh, are you expecting any any moral objection? I've got a six-year-old niece and a four-year-old nephew. You come near them, it's game over for you and your company. <laughs> nah, this is wrong. It tested really, really well with our focus groups. It's so creamy, it just tastes better. You tasted some. Nah, she's Yes, yeah, a beautiful meat, but I, I didn't know what I was what I was eating. Mm. Do we know how the children she's are? She's vile. They actually recover quicker than adults. And you're gonna launch it imminently? We actually have children on site, right here, right now. Do you want to visit? Nah, she's evil as f Actually, yes, I would. Yes, I think I would. Would you like some toddler tartar? Uh, no, I'll pass if that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Thankfully in the flesh, no. it's a reassuring sight. The idea is to create the most fun, relaxing environment possible for the kids before they go to harvest. Well, they do look happy and chilled. The children's centre is impressive. And Tamara explained it was designed to allow the children to relax because like livestock on the way to an abattoir, any stress in transit could impact the quality of their meat. As well as a double extraction for Gillian, Good Harvest have managed to get Gillian's grandson, Jimmy, a place as a junior donor. What the f***? to give a new generation a chance to pull themselves out of this crisis. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. Now it's time for these children's extractions to begin. Wow, do they always go in there that quickly? Right, it depends if it's their first time donating. Are you a little bit scared about it all? The boy nods. Of course you are. But you know what's really, really scary to me? Have you heard of inflation? Price hikes? These things all mean that ordinary, decent people like you, you don't have many options. But this, 
This is an amazing opportunity for you to do your bit, Jimmy. She is twisted and evil. Do you want to be a hero? Shall we? The boy follows her into a brightly lit room and Greg cocks his head. The children have their toys taken away and struggle on hospital beds. These children donors of Good Harvest are an example to the rest of us. And it's no wonder the states are 100% behind their sacrifice. The Trust and Trust say a future without food banks requires a benefit system that works for all and secure incomes so people can afford essentials. So it's no surprise eating children seems a more likely path for our country. It's a modest proposal, but it might be the only attempt we've seen to take this the great British up. cost of living crisis seriously. I'm Greg Wallace. Bon appetit. Nah, nah, that's f up. Um, <laughs> that, that, this, this is sickening. How, how can you actually? Surely that can't be real. That, that's sickening. But you know, it's one thing to exploit the the elderly and and the very very poor that are really really struggling like the vulnerable ones you know giving them a couple of hundred quid to take some of their meat take some of their flesh but they understand what's going on but little kids under the age of seven have no idea what is going on what it's for oh my god no they I really hope that is fake. I really hope that is a fake documentary. Anyway guys, that was horrifying, traumatic to say the least, and pff, you would never catch me eating that shit. You'd never catch me donating myself to them. No, no way. <laughs> yeah, I really hope that's fake. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy this video, uh, you're probably pretty in the head, so leave your comments and thumbs up down below. If you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications so you never miss a brand new video, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care.